Memento, Memento Mori. This one's going to be a fairly difficult achievement in that you do need to be strong enough to be able to clear both the first and second halves of Memory of Chaos 12. So this guide isn't going to cover that part, so you will need a team that's strong enough to clear up to that point. But what we will cover though are the mechanics of the fight itself and how we can work around those mechanics in order to get this achievement done. We'll kick it off with a breakdown on how everything works, and then if you're still unsure, I'll have the full playthrough with commentary to explain my decision making throughout the fight. I'll have this up for both a 4 party team and a 3 party team. So this achievement requires us to beat the boss, something unto death, with only one character able to take action. This means that the rest of your team need to be locked down in the pseudo death status that the boss cast. It's really just the second phase that matters for this, and you can just blast through the first phase however you like, but upon triggering the second phase, the boss will instantly give everyone full energy and then it's going to mark two characters for death based on who performs an action next. So because we're granted full energy, we can choose who gets marked for death by using that character's ultimate. The first two characters to either perform an attack, skill or ultimate will then get marked and get killed and imprisoned once the boss takes its next turn. Now, early into phase 2, you're going to want to break them out of that state as soon as you can. You can do this by dealing 5 instances of damage to the imprisoned character and this can be done through attacks but dots will be the most effective way of breaking them out as the damage will trigger outside of your turn. If you don't break them out on time, the boss will repeat the same phase again, granting you full energy and then marking 2 more characters for death. And then if all 4 characters get marked and killed, it's game over. So when running a team of 4, what you will need to do is play through phase 2 until you get the boss low enough that you feel that you're comfortable enough that a single character will be able to take him out within a single turn. Once you've gotten the boss to this point, you're going to want to let him capture two of your allies and then you're going to want to break one of them free, leaving you with three characters alive and one imprisoned. Then we're going to stall until the boss restarts his gimmick again, marking and killing another two of your units, leaving you with just one character. It's now up to this one character to kill the boss before its next turn, while actively avoiding releasing any of your other characters. If you manage to pull this off, the achievement is yours. With a 3 character team, it's going to be a little bit slower due to less DPS, but it's also going to be a lot simpler in that you will always want to keep all 3 characters alive until you're ready to kill the boss. At this point, that's when you let him capture 2 allies leaving you with just 1 before you finish him off. And so, if that sounds a little bit too confusing, let's jump over to the full run breakdown and I'll try to explain my thinking on everything that I do here. Okay, so I'm running a team of Argenti, Pella, Huahua and Fushuan. And the reason why I have both Fushuan and Huahua is because I actually want to talk about an interesting interaction that both of these characters have when it comes to this boss. So both Huahua and Fushuan's passive talents, so that's Fushuan's damage absorption and Huahua's heal that triggers on every ally's turn, these effects usually tick down at the end of their turn. But if they get killed and imprisoned, these effects stay active until they take another turn, which means that the benefit for someone like Fushuan is that you pretty much have full usage of the character even when they're imprisoned, which is amazing. Huahua isn't as great as Fushuan here since you're not going to have access to her heals by her skill, but with Fushuan you pretty much have 90% of the character still active even when she's captured. So this is pretty useful in terms of damage mitigation during the fight, but don't stress if you don't have it, it's just a nice perk to have if you have access to Fushuan. Now, the reason why I run Argenti is because I want a fast way to break imprisoned characters out of their death status. So obviously a dot character like Black Swan, Kafka or even Sampo is going to be the best here, but I didn't have them on my account and I don't have Sampo leveled, so I've gone with Argenti who can hit both prisons along with a very fast charging ultimate. So in this fight, single target characters are really going to struggle here. You're going to find that you simply won't have enough turns to break out both characters on time and that's just going to lead to death. So I would suggest that you pick your team wisely here, prioritizing DOT or AoE characters for breaking allies out, but also keep in mind that you do want one character with enough single target damage to finish off the boss at the end. Alright, so now we're just about to finish phase 1 and you'll see how phase 2 simply resets everything. My Pella here is currently in prison, but she'll get released once phase 2 starts. Not only that, every single character will also get their energy regenerated to full. So, here at the start of phase 2, I need to decide who and what to get captured. At this point in time it doesn't really matter too much, so I decided to just go with Pella and Huahua so I pop both of their ultimates. They're not going to get killed straight away though, so we still do have time to squeeze out a little bit more damage. You can see here however that they both do have an eye marker above their portraits to signify that they're the ones who are going to get killed once the boss starts his turn. 
And so while I would love it if I could give you guys a step-by-step -step guide on exactly what to do, how many turns this fight takes is really going to depend on your characters. So I do note here that I am doing about 20% of the boss's health in a single Argenti turn, so it kind of gives me a good idea of when I'm able to go for that killing blow later down the line. Alright, so now two of our characters are dead and imprisoned, but the boss is still on about 70% health which is just far too much, so we're going to start spamming AoE attacks to try and release both of them. So you can see Argenti in action here with him getting really quick ultimates to strip stacks. Normally you do want to save this ultimate to use the level 2 version for more damage, but here in this fight we just want to strip stacks as fast as possible, so we're going to be spamming those level 1 ults. Okay, so the boss is now sitting on about 60% health, and I'm just going to speed through the next 40% or so because we're just going to be doing the same thing here. We want to keep all of our characters alive, so we're just going to keep breaking them free each time they're captured. Right, so to continue our video here, the boss is just under 20% now and we've got two characters imprisoned. So we're going to break both of them free and we're going to prepare for the finishing blow. Now, so with four characters alive on the field, we're going to let the boss start his phase again, giving us full energy. And I'm going to pop both Hua Hua and Fu Shuan's ultimates to get them targeted. With their turns, I'm going to be using both of their skills as well so that we get the passive effect to stay active while they're imprisoned. With Pella and Argenti, I'm just going to start whittling down the boss slowly. I do have a level 2 ultimate on Argenti that I'm holding on to since I don't want to accidentally kill the boss too early. And for now, we're just going to start stalling until the boss kills Hua Hua and Fu Shuan. Okay, so now at this point, we're on a timer. If we let the boss go into his marking and killing phase again, we're going to fail the run. He usually does this on his third turn, so we need to break out one character within that time, leaving the other character with as many stacks as possible. So because of this, I'm going to only be using single target attacks to break Hua Hua out. And with two characters alive, you should be able to do this before the boss does the killing attack again. But I do get lucky here and the Memory of Chaos Turbulence does randomly target Hua Hua, which does help me take out a few stacks as well. And just like we planned. The boss starts marking his targets again while we have three characters alive. I'm going to use Pella and Hua Hua's ultimates to ensure that Argenti remains alive as the last man standing. And so at this point we just need to be really careful in regards to how much damage we dish out. We definitely don't want to accidentally kill the boss here so I just throw out a couple of basic attacks until Hua Hua and Pella get killed. Now once that happens I'm able to then line up my level 2 Argenti ultimate and unleash it on the boss. Thankfully, Fu Shuan still has 4 stacks up, so the splash damage here isn't enough to break her free. And so we managed to land the killing blow with Argenti as the only character able to take an action, which nets us the achievement, Memento Mori. Okay, now let's also take a quick look at the 3 man composition. I would only recommend running a 3 man team if you've got an AoE dot character like Black Swan, so that you can solo rescue both of your teammates. So this is a perfect example here of why Black Swan is just so powerful. You can see here that even though Black Swan gets killed and imprisoned, her arcana stacks are still active on the target, ticking away at both prisons and also the boss which allows Lao Chao who is a single target healer to still rescue both Black Swan herself and Japard. So other than that, it's not too different. With three characters, you just need to wait for the boss to capture two of your teammates before you nuke it down which I'll show here. And so that's it for the tips really. Let me know if you found a better way down in the comments and if you've got any questions feel free to also ask down in the comments or jump into StarDB Discord where there are plenty of achievement hunters who are ready to help.